Super Earth, our home. Prosperity, liberty. Hi there. <laughs> Democracy, our way of life. Oh, hello. But freedom doesn't come free. <laughs> No! Sweet liberty! No! The lore and story of Helldivers really isn't too deep, so I'm going to break this down into the four sections that the Super Earth Wiki for Helldivers gives us. The first one being the politics of Super Earth. Number two, the enemies of Super Earth. Number three, the culture. And finally, four, technology. It is the year 2084. When mankind ventured into space, we were curious to see if anything loomed behind those stars. Unfortunately, we were right. The initial contacts were peaceful, but soon the people of Super Earth realized the potential danger of communicating with the alien species. And before we knew it, they started our first intergalactic war. For 40 years, the war has raged on, a conflict whereby three hostile alien species are hellbent on a single goal, the total annihilation of the human species. Luckily, the fighting spirit of man has not decayed since the last great war on Earth. We are now stronger than ever. Man, woman, and child alike are encouraged to try their strength in the ultimate test, to have the courage to defend Super Earth, the politics of Super Earth. Mankind has improved upon the old concept of democracy. Utilizing computer-aided voting software, citizens are asked to answer several questions, and the outcome of their vote is decided upon by the computer. This removes the uncertainty that exists in the old systems where voters didn't understand fully what they were voting for, giving us managed democracy. Citizens of the Federation of Super Earth used automated voting software. They answered a few questions on the intergalactic wide web, the GWW, and the computer votes for them based on that outcome. The GWW is a network of interlinked communication devices that transmit data using quantum communication. Very elementary stuff, according to the ship's CO. The political climate. It is made very clear at several points in the game itself and in some of the DLC descriptions that the government of Super Earth has a history of brutally suppressing dissidents. The Super Earth broadcast screen states that questions regarding the Federation or government of Super Earth shall be sent to the appropriate quadrant. It is illegal to express oneself openly about the Federation or government of Super Earth in a negative manner and serious cases may result in arrest or termination. One of the privates on the ship's bridge mentioned that their neighbor apparently pressed charges on their son for not honoring the Super Earth flag, implying that this is considered a crime serious enough to warrant turning in one's own close family members. The ship's CO stated that all communications over the galactic wide web are continuously monitored by Super Earth in search of alien sympathizers. Citizens who doubt whether the terrorist bombings Super Earth using the justification to attack the cyborgs are actually caused by anyone affiliated with the cyborg nation and are decreed as cyborg sympathizers. Those who wish for peace talks with the cyborgs are painted as quote unquote hippies and Senator John W. Killjoy threatens to have them jailed or even executed. Entire units of Helldivers, arguably the most loyal of the citizens of Super Earth, have been known to be executed for supposedly being alien sympathizers. The first use of the iconic Hellpods was when the socialist government of the Northman's Creek tried to secede from the Federation of Super Earth. After 50 Helldriver pods dropped into the parliament, they were quickly executed and the planet brought to a compliance. These days, Northman's Creek is the region of the capital of the Struve region of the bug front. The MP-98 Knight SMG is often used by the Ministry of Defense to rapidly incapacitate groups of wrong thinkers. The Defender's signature weapon is aptly nicknamed CR-9 Suppressor, a semi-slash-fully automatic rifle firing small fragmental grenades that can devastate large masses of enemies. Their AD-334 Guard Dog drones are most effective against unarmed targets, firing indiscriminately at anything deemed hostile. The Ranger Pack DLC description mentions that Ranger training was standard procedure for all Helldivers in the early years of Super Earth. 
but now has become more rare. From the Defender Pack DLC description, we know that the Helldivers Defenders used to double as Riot Police before humanity unified properly. A portion of early Super Earth Riot Police were fully trained military assassins and reconnaissance specialists before Super Earth unified, and that the Ministry of Defense also either acted as a police force or supplemented it. The TOX-13 Avenger was developed by Dr. Junko under the 2079 Act of Self-Defense Research and has been tested exclusively on live targets. The DLC description for the Hazard Ops packs also notes that the following. Sometimes shunned by fellow Helldivers for their use of inhumane warfare, many a uh, Helldiver is happy to have them sent on a mission where it comes down to life or death. It's not like the enemy is human after all. Enemies of Super Earth. Our galaxy. The Milky Way is inhabited by more species than previously believed, and it turns out most of them are, in a one way or another, hostile. The Super Earth military is fighting to keep back the tide of enemies that besiege us on all fronts. The elite Helldivers go both beyond the front and behind our own lines to support you and our troops. The game consists of an endless series of war against three factions. The Bugs, Cyborgs, and the Illuminate. As soon as one of the war is won, or lost, another one immediately starts. The Admiral on the ship's bridge pretty much admits to this, stating, Of course, when we have won this war, there will be another to fight. And after that, another. And after that, another. I can go on, but you get my point. Let's focus on this war. Cyborg Secessionists. A couple of years ago, cyborg terrorists detonated a massive bomb in one of the city planets, killing thousands of civilians. Now is our time to get back at them. A quote from the ship's CO. Super Earth's usual case for war against the cyborg nation is, a cybernetically augmented human in an act of terrorism detonates explosives in the center of District 48 of Super Earth, killing eight citizens. Those who doubt the official story run the risk of being labeled a quote unquote cyborg sympathizer. Note that the initial explosion may have killed thousands, but that every war with the cyborgs in the game's galactic campaign is caused by a much much smaller scale terrorist attack. Cyberstan, the cyborg nation's homeworld, is a barren snow-covered wasteland on the galactic fringe. Whenever it is conquered by Super Earth, the cyborgs are then democratized, by force, coerced into then voting booths by the threat of losing their civil rights. Super Earth's Army Tactical Command invariably stations troops on the planet for a period of five years to quote-unquote keep the peace and run governmental positions. After which period, the cyborg's culture is supposed to have transitioned into a quote unquote, fully democratic and won by super earth standards. Meanwhile, the super earth's construction company, the SECC, a government contractor takes over the massive forges and industrial complex of Cyberstan. Eventually, inevitably, another bombing starts this whole cycle anew. Cyborgs are often depicted by the super earth government as socialists. They're not helping their case with their choice of a logo, a red star, constantly shouting battle cries and muttering to themselves in a variety of languages. Cyborg troops gleefully deride the Helldivers and Super Earth as, among other things, Pluchard scum. Rumors about Cyborg circulated amongst the ship's crew members. Some, or all, of these rumors could be the result of Super Earth propaganda. According to one of the privateers, a crazy scientist started replacing body parts on people they had kidnapped, end quote. The threat of being taken away by cyborgs for these quote-unquote perversive modifications is apparently used as a boogeyman. Bugs. The problem or solution? The Federation has decided that the bug threat is becoming too great. Senator John W. Killjoy declared, quote, The bugs have been a plague in this galaxy for too long. They must now be eradicated before they spread into other worlds, end quote part of the bug war announcement. The bugs are sentient extraterrestrial species, their form reminiscent of very large earth insects. Arachnids or crustaceans, as far as the scientists of super earth know, their homeward is Kepler Prime, a desert planet on the eastern fringe of the galaxy. Bugs are known to generate vast quantities of oil during decomposition similar to how Earth's pre-human life forms provided us with fossil fuel sources. During the announcement of each new war against the bugs mentioned is part of a lost oil pumps that the Helldiver Corp is to reactivate. These oil pumps, which, as known in the game's intro, prominently feature a Helldiver skull emblem over an oil drop. They are also found on Kepler Prime. The implications of this are that the Helldivers Corp is responsible for at least part of the resource gathering process and that they have been to Kepler Prime before. 
possibly triggering the bug's attack on Super Earth. Super Earth propaganda depicts the bugs as a threat that will infest the entire galaxy if not suppressed. However, when the war against the bugs is won, the tune quickly changes. Suddenly, the bugs are a rare, valuable species that is a potentially unlimited supply of fossil fuel resources for Super Earth and eliminating them, quote, just wouldn't be right from the moral perspective, end quote. Following this, a certain scientist called Dr. Henk Plog then works on a way to safely breed the bugs in a controlled manner. As there is always a new war after the current one, and a new one after that, and so on and so on, we can infer that the quote-unquote safe breeding of bugs tends not to work out too well. The Illuminate Weapons of Mass Destruction we have solid evidence that the Illuminate have an extremely powerful nanofusion device that can destroy an entire planet. Could you imagine the cry of millions, even if one of these devices are used? A quote from the ship's CO. The Illuminate, or Squith as they call themselves, are an advanced extra galactic race which for millennia has had settlements in the south quadrant of the galaxy. If super earth propaganda is to be believed, the aliens consider themselves enlightened beings. Originating from the ocean, the illuminate species make use of bioelectronics and nano-powered devices. According to the ship's science officer, they still sting slightly when touched because of their vestigial electrolyte glands. The Illuminate went down the path of electricity in the same way we did from rocks to bullets. The blue skin species was first encountered in the late 21st century when the Illuminate recon craft were frequently sighted. These sightings were dismissed as folklore back then, but after a time, the Illuminate came forward with a peace offering. This was declined by the government of Super Earth when it was found out that the mollusk-like aliens had a quote, large quantities of world-destroying devices, end quote, nicknamed obliterator bombs by Super Earth. This was deemed sufficient cause for a preemptive strike aimed at removing their presence from the galaxy and obtaining their highly advanced technology. To quote Senator John W. Killjoy, the statement sends a clear message to all would-be threats to Super Earth. If they have more advanced technology than us, be prepared to pay the price. After successfully defending against a region capital assault from the Illuminate, the ship's admiral reminds the player that there is solid evidence that the Illuminate were planning to use planet-destroying devices. However, lost region capitals can be recaptured from the Illuminate. Considering that Super Earth is destroyed and then moved to a new planet whenever the war is lost, the capitals would indeed have been destroyed and a new one with the same name and setup. It could also imply that the Illuminate are not as willing to use their weapons of planetary destruction as the citizens of Super Earth are led to believe. Super Earth deals with those who take tolerant stances with the Squith, described as the aliens of the Ancient of the Wise, by means of public executions. The Helldivers are sent in to disarm or preferably capture any WMDs and other potentially useful technologies that eclipse what Super Earth has at its own disposal. These likely include the SH-20 shield generator pack and the weaponized arc technology used in the AC-3 arc thrower and the AC-5 arc shotgun. Upon their defeat, Super Earth forces the Illuminate to sign a treaty which disallows them for creating an armed forces branch and requires them to turn over all weapons technology to Super Earth. According to Dr. Hank Plog, PhD, the amount of technology we are going to receive will accelerate our technology tenfold and allow us to create peacekeeping devices that have the power to destroy entire planets. End quote. Culture. Liberty Day is celebrated by the citizens of Super Earth on the 26th of October. The Helldiver community also celebrates Liberty Day. Arrowhead Studios has released free DLC available to everyone on this date consistently as of 2018. Every citizen of Super Earth is issued a ceremonial, but functional, M2016 Constitution bolt action rifle when they turn 16 to encourage military service. The government is giving out free weapons to get its young citizen used to handling a firearm which implies a highly militaristic society. The C-1 Perm Child Permit form is required for all citizens of Super Earth to legally reproduce. According to the NPC privates on the ship's bridge, these forms are not easy to fill out. Interestingly, the female private also mentions having a wife in text, but not in spoken dialogue. If this is not an oversight, considering that the privates mostly have the same lines, it can be inferred that same-sex relationships are not considered a taboo in Super Earth culture. Technology. Before we dive into the technology, I want to let you know that there's a very small section on the wiki, but we're also going to dive in their technology as stratagems. 
The GWW can receive information at any time during warp, deep space exploration, and even during battle. It works by an array of quantum devices with interlinked particles which can instantly transfer voice communication, text messages, important information from Super Earth, and so forth. The only delay is from the surveillance patriots on Super Earth who search all communications for signs of alien sympathizers. That's a quote from the ship's CO. Here's a fun fact about their technology. Did you know that the ship can get to any position in the galaxy in mere seconds? This is due to the Alcubierre drive invented in the early 2030s. The drive works by creating a wave in the time space to actually make time and well space flow around the ship. Another quote from the ship CO. Other than the Helldiver's main weaponry like primary assault rifles, pistols, arc throwers, and flamethrowers, they also have tons of stratagems at their disposal. Stratagems refer to wide variety of powerful ordinances and war material that Helldivers are able to call down from the Helldiver command during missions on enemy territory. Each stratagem has its own unique code consisting of a sequence that the D-pad inputs between three and seven buttons long, which is used to request delivery. Interestingly enough, the stratagems are tied to a Helldiver's rank. There are several standard issue stratagems which are available to Helldivers regardless of rank such as resupply and the MG-94 machine gun. A lot of the lore I found about the stratagems and the Helldiver wikis primarily exists because of Helldivers 1 with not much mention about Helldivers 2. Interesting enough, a very powerful stratagem that was originally in Helldivers 1 that's currently not in Helldivers 2 is the Exostute Stratagem Launcher. And these stratagem beacons can be deployed while piloting the Walker, Stomper, Obsidian, and Lumberer Exosuits. The stratagems are also broken down into four categories. There's supply, defense, offensive, and special stratagems. Special stratagems are granted to the player by Helldiver command to deal with certain mission-specific problems. For example, the Hellbomb. These will always be available in any mission that requires the destruction of a stationary enemy target, such as a bug nest. The time frame from Helldivers 1 to Helldivers 2 indicates that there was a hundred years in between, where the Helldivers were even decommissioned at a point, which could be the reason why some stratagems are missing. Specifically, the ME-1 sniffer metal detector for finding landmines and other types of metal objects. Also missing are the various supply vehicles. Helldivers 2 being a live service game will probably introduce these walkers and other tanks and vehicles over time. It's just interesting enough that the war was started without access for Helldivers to be able to pilot these vehicles. Ultimately, Helldivers is pretty much a fascist-like government disguised as democracy. Overall, Helldivers is an amazing game to play, but funny when you think about the lore and implications of what you're doing on each planet. But I suppose that doesn't matter because it's all for the glory of Super Earth.